Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of new viewers to this one. So if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button below. And what you'll find on my content and on this channel is I get together with some of the best hounds and well-known handlers there are, as well as historical figures throughout time and some new up and coming people. And we get together and go hunting and try and preserve the story of the hunt as well as some of the history behind the people and dogs involved. And through all my social media platforms, my content reaches around a million people a month right now. It's been growing pretty well lately. And what I try and do with my content is present coon hunting with the respect it deserves. I don't just go out into a woods with a cell phone and try and live stream it. I spend a lot of time editing and using professional camera equipment to try and take the best pictures and videos as I can because I love hunting with dogs and it's been a way of life for me and my family for a really long time. So that's just a little bit about me and what I do. Tonight's video is actually going to feature Kevin Cable and some of his dogs. In this video we hunted Money in the Bank and his young dog Breaking in the Bank. But before that video starts, I just want to tell you guys that if you're going to buy from Dogtree, you can use my discount code STARK5 to save some money. Or if you're going to buy a Big Dog Light, you can use code STARK10 to save some money on your Big Dog Light as well. Also, don't forget, if you're interested in entering to win a new Dr. Pathfinder 2, make sure you are a current subscriber to this channel. I'll be doing the giveaway of the new Dr. Pathfinder 2 tracking system once this channel hits 6,000 subscribers. And I'm really close to getting there right now. And if you're interested for more ways to enter, check out my Facebook page, Clayton Stark, Stark Outdoors, and there's posts on there that tell you how you can enter this giveaway. And for more information about my discount codes, you can check the description below. That also has links to all my sponsors as well. And I appreciate all my sponsors and all of you out there that have subscribed to my Patreon page and all of you that view these videos because you are the people that make this possible and I greatly appreciate it. And if you want to help support me or get behind the scenes access or early access to these videos with live updates of what's going on as I hunt, just check out my Patreon page. It's www.patreon.com slash starkoutdoors. And like I said, the links to that are all below. Also, one more announcement I just want to let you guys know. As some of you have already heard, in the past I've hunted a lot of dogs for the public, whether that be squirrel dogs or coon dogs, both pups all the way to finish dogs. And I also coach high school football, so I don't do that from July until the end of October because I'm so occupied with time with football. But now with football starting to wind down, I just want to let you guys know I will be hunting dogs for the public again. I'm looking to take on a coon dog, preferably a finished one that just needs hunted and kept in shape, or maybe an older dog that needs hunted up and put in shape. Not necessarily looking to start pup because I have a couple pups of my own coming. But I hunt just about every night of the week, especially when it's not football season. And I have some of the best hunting in the country and I've hunted quite a few dogs. So if that sounds interesting to you, just reach out to me and see if you can work something out. And in this video, this is actually part one of a video series. So I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you come back for part two in a couple weeks we go hunting with big money and a little bit of money. So thank you for watching and here's the next Hounds and Spotlight episode. My name is Kevin Cable, live in Connersville, Indiana. When did you start coon hunting? Uh, I was probably about six or seven years old. Who got you into it? Uh, my uncle James Tyree and my grandpa Carl Hall. What did you, what do they hunt? Uh, my grandpa always hunted blue ticks and then my uncle James, he's hunted walkers mostly. Nice. Was it just pleasure hunting though? Uh, yeah, I hunted my first competition hunt when I was eight years old. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> Started from early age. Huh? Yeah, which it was a youth hunt, but uh, UKC youth hunt out of Liberty, Indiana. Huh? What were you? Uh, let's see. I was hunting a female named Coyote Jody. Okay. I think I finished fourth in that hunt. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I don't. Most of the time, I ask people that it's usually a little bit. Competitions are usually a little bit later, but I guess now they're having youth hunts more often. That probably more people getting started competition hunting a lot earlier. Yeah, I jumped right into it. So did you? Did anyone give you any pointers or stuff beforehand, or did you just kind of jump into it? Uh, yeah, my uncle. Every time we went out on a, you know, pleasure hunt, we kind of treated it like calves, struck and treat dogs, and he kind of walked us through it, and I caught on to it pretty quick. Well, that's good to have have someone like that to show you kind of how it works, because that would be pretty nerve-wracking if you're eight years old and just thrown out like yeah <laughs> after that did you pleasure hunt very much or did it, for you is pleasure hunting a competition up pretty much just the same amount just about the same amount yeah you know, we'd get to go in the summertime but uh summertime i used to go to uh james's about every wednesday mom and dad would take us out there and drop me off and i'd stay out there and we'd hunt then he'd get up the next day and go to work and uh so about every weekend it was either pleasure hunting or went to youth hunt for his one close. Like what was the first big hunt that you won? Uh, I think I was, I won the PKC Youth World, I think it was in 2004 or 2005. I won it. Okay. Well, it was, uh... I think it says probably or something. Yeah, it's right there somewhere on one of them books. 
I think it was, two, it was 2004 or 2005. Okay. What were you hunting then? I was hunting a dog named Coon Dog Jim. He was just a single registered dog. He was off of a Walker female that didn't really know what his dad was. Um, good neighborhood, we always said. But uh, <laughs> bought him from a preacher that lived in Harrison, Ohio. And I'd done a bunch of winning with him. I won the Youth World with him, PKC Youth World. And then I got second with him in the UKC Youth Nationals. Uh, I made him a grand night all, all on my own. The dogs you get, you pretty much raise them from a puppy and train them, or how do you do that? Uh, no, I, I, I start a lot of puppies, you know, on cage coons and stuff like that in here in the yard, but very few get to stay. Uh, I buy most of mine when they're, you know, running and training their own coons, stay and treat, and I normally do the rest uh, myself after that point, but very few of them get to stay at a young age, start to finish. Okay. How long have you been coon hunting then? Well, I'm, uh, I just turned 31 in July. Okay. Um, so I've been hunting since I was eight years old. So pretty much been a big part of your life for yep. as long as you can remember. So uh, you want to name some of your, just over your history, some of the biggest name stud dogs you've had? Biggest, well, of course, big money. And then I had little money, money maxed out. Um, and then now money in the bank are the only three stud dogs I've ever had. Okay. What was the first one? Big money. Big money? Yeah. So what were some of the hunts you went with them? Uh, I want to Ohio State hunt uh, with him. Uh, I won the PKC pup shootout with him, a truck hunt, uh, in 15. And then I placed him. I won every early round as a one year old in the super stakes with him, never doubled up. As a two year old, I got, uh, I think I got third that year with him as a two year old in the super stakes. And then as a three-year-old, I got fourth with him in the finals of the Super Stakes. And then what was the next one? Uh, then Money Maxed Out, Little Money was the next one, which he was off of Big Money and a Wipeout Female. Um, I won the Pro Division with him, uh, several pro hunts. Um, gotten, we got in the finals of State Hunt several times, never did win it. Um, probably his biggest deal was winning a pro runoff. I am top six of the Nationals a bunch, World Hunt, Super Takes, just never could really seal the deal with him, but always got his picture taken when I showed up. And then the next one? Next one was Bank. Um, I bought him when he was about 15, 16 months old. Uh, I won the World Hunt with him, PKC World Hunt, 2019. Uh, right there in about 32 days, I won 71,000 with him. Um, he still, to my knowledge, is the only dog that's ever won all three nights of a Pro Classic. Uh, got in the finals, hunted it off, won it all three nights, won another additional 30,000 right after the world. Um, he, I won the Indiana State Hunt with him. Also placed him in the uh, semifinals, or the finals of the truck hunt. Uh, got third. That's, that's about it with him, I believe. And then you say that have some young dogs out of him? Yeah, I got a young dog out of him that I call Breaking the Bank. Um, he's uh, he's 15, 16 months old. I'm going to fix and start pushing him in some hunts here after his kill season. Uh, do you have any advice for anyone that might be new to competition hunting, getting into it? Um, know the rules. Just the biggest thing. I think that a lot of arguing and misunderstanding the rules. So if you know the rules, it'll stop a lot of headaches. So just read the rule book and know them inside and out before you get to go on a bunch. That's pretty good advice that way. You can't say you got cheated or right. screwed you because you didn't know the rules. Yeah. When you're getting a dog ready for a comp big competition hunt, like how often, I guess, how often do you hunt them to get them ready? Uh, really depends on the dog. Every dog was kind of the same. Uh, big Money, for example, he w after he was two years old, he was more of a dog. The more you left him laid up, just kind of kept him in shape but didn't really pound him. He done better. Um, when I won the truck hunt, he hadn't been turned loose in about a month. Mm. And it was winter time. I went down there and, and won the truck with him and looked good doing it. A um, little money. He was the type of dog he had to hunt every night, all night long. Uh, he was more high strung. Had to keep him, keep the edge knocked off of him. Banks kind of a lot like big money. You don't have to hunt him every night. Uh, you just pull him out and, and take him and he goes and does his job. Uh, low maintenance, I call them. So bank his biggest deal was I just kind of kept the 
kept Edge knocked off of him, kept him in good physical shape, just more conditioning here at the house than night in and night out hunting. Right. So one thing a lot of people might not realize if they're not familiar with competition hunting is you're gone quite a bit and you have a family. Do you have any advice for people how to handle that kind of that balance? Uh, I've probably done it a little bit different than most because I don't I don't go as much as I used to. I used to be gone every weekend, which we're still gone. She's no more when I'm gone, she's gone. She goes one way and I go the other. She's showing dogs and I'm going to a bigger hunt. But uh, I definitely make sure the family's first before I leave. Make sure everything's taken care of here, uh, which it is my job. But still, family comes first. Right. So you brought up your, your, this is a family thing for you, dogs, hunting, and showing everything. You want to talk about your family a little bit? Uh, I got a, I got a wife. We've been married for, uh, we've been together for about seven years. Uh, been married for four years here real soon. Um, I got a son who just turned six years old. Um, he loves the dogs. My wife's big into showing the dogs. We used to hunt together a bunch before she had the boy. Uh, now she's kind of just more into the show dogs and don't hunt as much, but uh, she does real good in the show. She, now that she, she's showing blue ticks now, I don't hold that against her too much, but uh, she's done real well with them. Uh, she puts on several good youth hunts a year for the local clubs, and uh, she enjoys that for the kids, so they get, a, they get to enjoy it. And, and that's what I grew up doing, so I like putting time back into it, give back to the sport. Um, we just kind of make it a family deal when we are together. It's kind of, we're still doing the same thing that we're doing if we're apart. But I like seeing that because with a lot of these videos, that's you get to see the handler and maybe some of the dogs. But what a lot of people don't realize is it's a family thing, and there's a for you especially your whole family's into it. But even if your family's not into it, it affects them because you're gone. You're gone even when you're not at a hunt. You're you're hunting at night. I mean, you're it definitely it definitely takes a woman that knows you're ain't you know you're hunting you're not out doing other things you know <laughs> they got to definitely trust you because you're yeah. you're gone more than you're home with them uh but i'm lucky enough that she gets to stay at home with the boy and we get to see each other throughout the day and i'm going at night but uh and she growed up coon hunting so she kind of knows the ins and outs of it and knows what it what it takes to do it that makes it easy or not easy but it makes it easier because they know What's Both of you know what you're getting into mm -hmm. at the start. When you're getting dogs ready, do you, like when coon season's in, do you give them very many coon? Uh, yeah, I, I kill several coons. Um, Big Money's the only one that I didn't kill many coons to because he, he, he always would go back as something I never could break him from was going back to a tree. Uh, if I didn't kill him coons, it, it, I didn't have that problem, so I just didn't kill him coons. Um, Bank, I killed him several coons. Uh, uh, the more coons you killed him, the better he looked. So hmm. I, I killed him a lot of coons. Um, he kind of thrived off of killing him coons. Um, little money, I killed him some, not not a bunch, but some. Uh, the bit dog that I'm hunting right now off of um, little money, I killed him several coons. It kind of keeps him more in pocket where he ain't as out of pocket as much. So I would say I kill I kill my fair share probably more than most. Yeah. But it's more dependent on what that dog needs. On what that dog needs, yeah. yep. That's kind of the handler's job. to, And it's just trial and error, you know what I mean? Just do what you think's right. And if it works, keep doing it. If it don't work, quit doing it. Since you've been hunting these dogs for a while, have you noticed any certain time period where they seem to come on pretty good? Uh, all my dogs look a little bit better. Besides Bank, he's he's kind of a little bit different. But Little Money and Bit and Bank, they're, uh, they're more of a hot nose medium to hot nose dogs so they, they look better when coons are on the ground moving they can get after coons a little bit better um keeps them in pocket where they ain't out of pocket as much bank he it's just like he invents coons he can take a bad track and work them up and trim them and have them where most dogs if they run a bad track they'll end up on a den or put it in the ground it just seems like he always produced a coon at the end um and i think that's what helped him succeed more in the hunts is in a short period of time it's just because he treats so many coons uh, there wasn't no, well, I hope he's got it. Just if I needed it at the end of the hunt, he had it. Uh, that was kind of little money's deal. Just the few hunts I had him in, he'd either be out of pocket on me and I needed needed that coon to win or he'd be on a den tree, which he was a very accurate dog, but it just seems like when I needed it the most, uh, it wouldn't be there. Um, so I I would say Banks more of a more of a fall and 
this time of year when coons are rougher tree and that laid up in the oaks bank bank shines a little bit better in the spring and fall uh, little money and big money looked a little bit better you squirrel hunt too don't you yeah uh, you hunt mountain curs that we got yeah that's what I what I did have I actually sold him at the end of last squirrel season did you when did you start squirrel hunting mm, I'd say I was fresh out of high school so I say I was probably 17 18 years old how did you get into that uh, just got to where I wanted to do it just thought it was fun kind of seen some videos on Facebook and different things and I I went through several before I found one found one I liked and and hunted him till till he died and then bought another one is there anything comparing coon hunting and squirrel hunting is there any comparison for you uh i like squirrel hunting a lot better just that's just so seasonal you only do it three months out of the year i just i like to be able to, to kill the squirrels and it's definitely a lot more fast paced and it's a couple hours of the day that you know it's prime time and it's wide open pretty much downtime coon hunting it's i kind of it's more my job so it's more of a all night you know five or six hour deal and coons might be moving might not be moving squirrel hunting you go the you know the best time of the day and, uh, i'd say that's why i like it a little bit more is ain't as much stressful and have to worry as much about what the dog's doing since you had started having kids did you notice any difference between squirrel and coon hunting easier to yeah i, <laughs> I, I used to do both and didn't worry with it i'd coon hunt most of the night get up in the morning and go squirrel mm-hmm. hunting didn't really care but uh, now I like to spend time with the boy and the wife, so I kind of do one more than the other. Yeah. Do they squirrel hunt much? Uh, the boy's just now starting where he's wanting to squirrel hunt. And, uh, Angie, she'll, she'll hunt with me until it gets cold. Once it starts getting cold, she's done, <laughs> so you don't like the cold. The best time. Yeah, best time to do it. She don't like it. Do you remember everything you've won? Because it's probably much. been a I've, lot. I've won everything besides the Nationals, PKC Nationals. Uh, Super stakes. I've been in one of super stakes, one of pro run off, world hunt. Uh, the, was it the PKC world hunt? I won the PKC world hunt. Um, won the PKC youth world hunt. Won the pro division. Uh, won the super stakes. Placed in the super stakes multiple times in the finals. Won the state hunt. Um, placed in the top six of the nationals numerous times. Um, I think I've won almost 500,000 in PKC. Uh, just now started hunting UKC quite a bit uh, since I started hunting for Fred Tennis. Uh, I've placed in the top 16 in the uh, Autumn Oaks the last two years. Uh, I got Echo in the top 100 of the UKC World last year. I placed bit 20th this year in the UKC World. Um, just kind of switching it up a little bit place bit in the top uh, I think it was 96 of the TOC so I started to mix it up and hunt a little bit more UKC than what I normally did um, it has a bunch of that what I've won there I've won everything but the PKC Nationals and PKC won several pro uh, pro hunts that's probably about it. Not it yeah so who all are you hunting for right now I'm just hunting for Fred Tennis um, he owns Bit and the bank pup that I got breaking in the bank. He owns them. Uh, I just I'm hunting them for him. And then me and Larry Danner's partners on Big Money and Bank, but uh, I don't hunt either one of them no more. Just breed Bank and um, took Big Money off the market about a year ago. A handful of females I owe rebreeds to and stud deals that I've done. Um, that's that's about it. And then I hunt several dogs of my own that. I hunt up and resell, but other than that, that's all I got right now. So, you, have you got any females bred? Uh, I bred a couple to some people. Um, I got one litter of pups right now. But I got two females left. Is all I got right now. They're they're six weeks old. Okay. They're off a bank, and a bushwhacker female. Okay. What is probably your favorite memory, coon hunting? Uh. I went in the youth world and then uh, the PKC world. Uh, I was lucky enough when I got in the finals, uh, Angie brought the boy down to Salem and they was there. Uh, let's see, I won. I went out early, won. They was there before I left to go out on the early round. I won early and then come come back in, they was there and then went, draw back out and went out late. Um, 
and they was they was there for all that. So I, I made that pretty memorable that they got to be there for it. Yeah, that's that's pretty awesome that they got to be there for that. Yeah, that was good good timing for that. What's the next big hunt you're going to? I got bit uh, through the zones through the PKC zone, so I go next this coming Friday to uh, the PKC World, and I'll be in the quarterfinals with him. So that'll be the next big hunt, and then step back from that, and then start looking at some bigger pro classics to go to this winter. Sounds pretty good in there. There you go, there you go. 
So when I come back in a couple weeks, what dogs are we going to be hunting? Uh, probably hunt big money, a drop or two, and then a uh, little bit of money. And that's the one you're hunting in the PKC World? Yep, hunt? I got him in the quarterfinals of the PKC World. He's in there opening, but you can just hear house dogs off to our left. dog we hunting now? This is a 16 month old pup off a bank. I call him uh, breaking the bank. Okay. Whole pack of coyotes, yard dogs. Got everything. Think he's got treat in there? He's thinking about it. He normally comes on him a little bit better than that.
what are a few ways you like starting pups? Uh, if I'm messing with a young dog, I like carrying a little parachute cord and something where I can get it up high enough where they don't jack and jump on the tree. It stops them from jacking at a young age. Uh, most of my pups, you're better off to start them right by themselves, just kind of ease them around, which I'm not very good at, so I normally sell all mine at a young age and buy them back running and training, but if I'm messing with them in the yard, that's definitely make sure they ain't jacking and jumping on a tree. Working a track in there. And they're blue ticking it. <laughs> So you hunt most of your puffs by themselves, huh? Yeah. Yep. Most of my dogs are fairly independent, natural, so I don't really have to work on that much. And it seems like they progress a little bit faster if you're hunting them by themselves. 